I hear that we are taking this fight on. Police haven't accepted uh, your exemptions. Yeah. Which is crazy. Outrageous. Crazy. Outrageous. Like, when have they become doctors? Yeah? We've got a doctor's certificate to say that we're exempt from wearing a mask, yet they won't accept that. So are they higher up or more educated than a doctor, or are they just trying to make an example out of us? Natalie and Anthony, can you tell us what's happening with their case that, you know, shocked the country? So basically what's happening with their case is it's been set down for a defended hearing. The situation has evolved in such a manner they were fined, both of them, for first of all not having a mask on, second of all they were fined for uh, not requiring their workers to wear a mask. Now, on the first point, they have mask exemptions. We provided those to the police very early on, and the police have actually refused to withdraw the charges against them in quite an unreasonable fashion, we would say. So the matter has been set down for a defended hearing on all counts, and essentially we're looking at the defended hearing sometime early next year. We've got a doctor's certificate to say that we're exempt from wearing a mask, yet they won't accept that. So are they higher up or more educated than a doctor, or are they just trying to make an example out of us. Yeah. That's I, what it feels like, an example out of us, to scare the public and people around to make sure they wear a mask or they'll be fined and all of that sort of stuff, so. Well, guess what? They're gonna try and make an example out of you guys and we're gonna make an example out of them. Cameron says that you've got a court date coming. Yes. Everyone at home, as you know, you haven't paid, you haven't had to pay legal bills. Exactly. We've been covering it all. Yes. And the people at home at fightthefines.com.au are going to donate to keep fighting as far as we have to go to make sure that we make an example out of them. Flip 100%. the script. Yeah, for sure. The mainstream media took these guys from pillow to post by coming and, and posting outside. It takes the discretion away from the prosecution. Even where reason would otherwise prevail, it hasn't. But nonetheless, we have a very good case. We're going to defend it on all grounds. We're confident that we will get them acquitted of the charges and that we will have good outcomes. They've been treated very poorly simply because, first of all, they have mask exemptions and second of all, they were very vocal about their wish not to discriminate against members of the public who might actually be suffering from a uh, disability or some other significant reason why they're not wearing masks. Uh, they didn't want to have to uh, bring up that sort of pain or trauma for these, for these members of the public when they come to patronise their business. So for that, uh, which was previously probably a very humanitarian position, they have been treated very poorly. Uh, and they continue to be treated very poorly. They're discriminated against and they're also targeted. Um, they've been targeted numerous times for, for checks, just to keep on uh, incessantly checking whether or not they're keeping on track with things. It's not right the way they've been treated. You've given us a lot of support. A lot of people have watched your show. So many people still to this day come in and say, I've seen you uh, coming in, I've seen you on RV, you know, put up a good fight, you're a legend, blah, blah, this and that. But um, obviously, You've made it a lot easier for us. Oh, uh, fighting this on our own would have been this was very, very even, stressful. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have, would have been able the, to do it. So it's, it's stressful without, you know, support. But yeah, being it, we are not out of cent, out of pocket. Sorry, um, a cent. Um, so <laughs> she really wants to be on it. Yeah. How are you feeling? <laughs> no, well, so know this: we're in there all the way. The, we're going to keep going as long as it takes. We're going to make sure justice is served and that um, we're going to demand that those exemptions are upheld and we're going to make an embarrassment of, of, of the police and, and those who are trying to um, intimidate, harass and abuse their powers. Is there anything you want to tell the people at home that are continuing to donate to support to ensure that you don't have to pay those bills? Common people like ourselves, I don't think we would have been able to put up a fight like we are right now without the help of Arvi and Rebel News. Um, most of the fights would have stopped. Um, but with your support, I'll fight to the end, you know, like, I want to make sure that my kids have a future that is worth living for, and your kids, you know, not just mine, my kids' kids, and so on and so on. So hopefully we'll get this a win. <laughs> Perfect. You hear that, guys? Small business owners that were abiding by, as crazy as they are, those chief health officers' directions, had the exemptions. The state think that they can tell them that their exemption is invalid. But with your help, we're gonna flip that script, fightthefines.com.au, give what you can to ensure we can continue fighting until the very end. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Harvey. My pleasure. My great. pleasure. On one of the cases, I think it was the detective sergeant who was actually uh, the officer charging, say that she made a recommendation that the charge be withdrawn. 
and the superiors at the police station down south didn't withdraw the charge. So we ended up going to, we're ending up going to court on all charges, essentially being defended. Even though the officer who made the arrest and who laid the charge had recommended on new evidence that the charge didn't have legs in court. So, you know, the, the degree of unreasonableness in relation to some of these things becomes pretty clear. Um, that isn't to say that the police are bad people. That isn't to say that we don't like the police. It's just simply to say that the directive which has been coming from the New South Wales government, and we can see this happening interstate as well, has been to enforce compliance and to push these, push these orders, even where reason and justice would not say that it's uh, correct to do so. And in this case, that's particularly the position. Neither reason nor justice would, uh, would validate uh, you know, the situation that we have here. Uh, but nonetheless, we're heading to a defended hearing. We're wasting uh, the court's time in a lot of ways, and we're wasting the prosecution's time, wasting the defence's time, um, simply because uh, these, these uh, laws are more, more concerned with uh, compliance than they are with justice. The allegations against them, we say, don't have any chance uh, at a defended hearing, but nonetheless, uh, we've got to go through the process. Well, you know this, I don't have to tell you that, the viewers at home are willing and able and are going to stand by uh, them and you guys are fighting for them as far as we have to, fightthefines.com.au, people are going to continue donating to help uh, fund their defence. And we're very grateful for that. Um, all the stress that they have had in the past few months. Certainly one of the stresses that they haven't had is the financial stress during this period, particularly where their business was closed for a large point of that time, the legal costs involved. We've kept our costs low and you guys by crowdfunding have actually managed to um, keep people like Natalie and Anthony who have been victimised from having to pay you know, legal costs of any kind during this period when they are essentially in a very tough spot. So thank, thank you to everyone who's donated and who's made it possible for us to defend their fines.